Let's not cross our borders. Fears of credit rating downgrades will deter the world's poorest countries from taking advantage of debt relief being offered under the G20 Common Framework, World Bank Chief Economist Carmen Reinhardt has said. In November, the G20 group of major economies launched a framework designed to streamline approaches to help countries defer or renegotiate down their debt as part of a wide relief program. Ethiopia's application in January to the program, which foresees private creditor participation, prompted Fitch and S&P to slash its sovereign rating to Addis Ababa. Chad and Zambia have also applied for debt relief under the framework. Ethiopia's dollar-denominated bonds have taken a beating since the country sought relief through the framework, pushing yields from below 6% in January to above 9% following the request. The framework, which comes in addition to payment relief under the G20 Debit Service Suspension Initiative, is open to more than 70% of the world's poorest countries, such as Pakistan, Mongolia, Cameroon, and Angola. Most of them are located in Africa or Asia, and not all have international bounds outstanding. Meanwhile, a group of South African Uber drivers are to go to court to seek rights, including compensation for unpaid overtime and holiday pay. While Uber said the decision did not apply to all its 600,000 drivers in the country, it was a blow to the company's business model and a significant victory in battles being fought on many fronts against the so-called gig economy. While businesses say that the gig economy offers flexibility for work as trade unions, among others, say it is exploitative. The South African case could affect up to 20,000 drivers. Finally, Nigeria's external reserve dipped by 0.41% on Monday to stand at $35.28 billion. This represents a decline of $146 million in foreign reserve, the highest single-day loss since April 2020. Nigeria's external reserve position has now hit its lowest level in almost two months, losing over $1.1 billion in less than a month. For Channel 1 News, Amongari Washiri.